Hi, welcome to the next assembly video for the RepRap Prusa i3. Uh, before we move on, I just wanted to, I forgot to tell you something in the last video. Um, you're going to want to actually snip off the excess belt here because it'll actually um, get caught on the pulley or on the pulley or on the bearing. So you want to make sure you clip off the excess on both sides. Okay, just a little bit. Okay, and in this video, we are going to work on the PCB heat bed. So I'm going to move this aside for now. And get the PCB heat bed out. Okay, we, for this we'll need uh, some wire. We'll need to use the 18 gauge wire. And uh, we will also need the... Um, the stranded wire for this. I'm going to use some um, white and black wires for this. And set the rest of the wire aside for now. This is the um, 22 gauge stranded wire, okay, and this is the 18 gauge stranded wire. Go ahead and take a little bit off of here, a little bit of the sheath, a little bit more, that looks good. And uh, don't need to take the other end off yet. Oh well, no, might as well actually. And before I go any further, and on this side you want to take off a little bit more. This will be the side that will actually get plugged into the electronics. Yeah, solder and I am heated up here. Here. Now we're actually not going to need all of this wire, so I'm just going to go ahead and snip what we need. Um, it's going to be a little bit longer than 18 inches. I'll just cut it right at 18 inches, actually. That should be plenty. Uh, you know, yeah. So it's the same length as the 18 gauge. Strip a little of the sheath off of this wire, off both sides. Okay, and by the way, if um, if you're purchasing the uh, the partially assembled kit, you actually won't won't need to do this because this part will be done for you. So flip over the PCB heat bed, and at the bottom you'll notice um, some contacts. There'll be two large square contacts and um, six little ones. And you don't need to worry about the little ones. This is a the original specification called for um, a resistor and LEDs, but technically the LEDs are sort of a, uh, um, a false warning. Uh, the purpose of the LEDs is to let you know when this is heated, but in actual usage, it's always hot even when it's not on. So the LEDs are, I mean, kind of a bad idea. I mean, I mean, they made sense originally and everything, but in practical usage, they don't make any sense. And so I don't recommend actually using them. Okay, let's see if the uh, soldering iron's heated up here. Looks good. I'm gonna start by putting a little bit of solder on the large plates here. And then I'm going to um, get my helping hands. And 
put some solder on the on the ends of the wires of the 18 gauge wires. Now the polarity doesn't matter on these, so you can just go ahead and uh, do uh, black or red on either side. Just hold the wire to the plate and heat it up. They should melt together. Let it cool before you move the wire because um, that will ruin your solder joint. And do the same for the other side. And then just take a look at them. Okay, that feels great. Okay, I'll go ahead and flip this back over. Uh, technically, um, you can use either side as the top side of the plate. I like to use this side as the top side of the plate simply because the, the element is on this side. So it probably gets a little bit hotter. But I've seen people mount this side up as well and um, as, far as, I, as far as I know it works. I've never actually tried it so I don't really know. But um, okay, next we need to do the uh, thermistor. Looks like there's um, more wire in here than we need. Now these thermistors are already coated with PTFE and you can tell down at the end that uh, the wires are exposed. These are a little bit longer than I need them to be so I'm just going to cut, cut them a little bit. And I'm going to put, it, put them in the uh, helping hands to hold on to them. Okay, and then go ahead and put some solder on these. And I'm going to do the same. With the black and white wires here. Tug on them a little bit just to make sure that they that they're secured. Um, you want to be careful; these are kind of delicate. Um, you can't actually pull the wires out of the thermistor at the end here, so you want to be careful not to do that. And um, <clears throat> next, uh, these will need to be either coated with some tape or um, something that's high heat, like uh, Captain tape or a heat shrink of some kind, to make sure that these contacts don't touch. Because if they touch, it will um, actually register as a um, uh, different temperature and so you don't want that to happen. So um, you can use whatever you'd like, Captain Tape, um, Heat Shrink, it's anything that will be able to withstand about a, a 130 30 degrees uh, centigrade, should be just fine. I'm just going to use a little bit of Heat Shrink here. That should, that should do it. Okay, and um, now this is going to be my bottom side of the heat bed. So this needs to get mounted here to about the center of this triangle. And um, to do this, we will need a little bit of silicone.
dip the thermistor in some silicone here. This is um, Permatex Ultra Copper. Accidentally got some on my fingers. All right. And then um, I'm going to tape this to the PCB heat, heat bed with some Captain tape. Imagine there might be a different, another kind of material that you could use to do this. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I've never tried anything other than Captain tape. You want to make sure that you angle the wires down towards the same direction as the 18 gauge wires. Okay, that'll make a really nice contact there. I'm just going to go ahead and use a little bit more captain tape here to, uh, to secure the wires in place. Almost done with the heat bed. Now we just need to prepare these ends. These wires here for the 18 gauge wires will actually be um, um, screwed into a, ter a terminal block. So I'm just going to coat them with some solder to make these nice and solid. Okay, so that they don't break or anything in the future. And then uh, we just need to put some ends on the thermistor wires. These will actually be um, <clears throat> plug will plug into the electronics using a computer socket connection. So I just need to break off a couple of these. And at this point, I'm done with the soldering iron. So I'm just going to clean it up real quick and turn it off. Put some solder on there to keep it safe. Okay. Break off a couple of these uh, gold plated computer socket connections. I'll grab my uh, crimp tool. And place the wire in there. Plug them into the computer socket plug. This is not polarity sensitive, so it doesn't matter which direction. Okay, that's good. Now we'll be able to um, mount the PCB heat bed and connect the uh, PCB heat bed and thermistor to the electronics. And I just wanted to point out now, if you do get the partially assembled kit, um, all of this will actually be done for you. So you won't, you won't have to do anything that we just did here in the video. Let's go ahead and get this mounted real quick. Shouldn't take too long. Now this is the back of the uh, rep wrap. So mount the PCB heat bed in this direction like so. And um, in order to do that, we will need four bed springs. and uh, four of the 25 millimeter M3 bolts. And so the way that this will work is um, you'll put the bolt in the PCB heat bed here and put a spring on it and then secure it to the aluminum plate and do that for each corner.
actually might have um, planned on using 18 millimeters for these. Let's see how an 18 millimeter works out. Yeah, you know, I think, I think the 18 millimeters are actually what's going to work better for here. Sorry about the mix-up. I think I used 25 millimeter originally, but um, yeah, that's... They're just too long. Unnecessary. the 25 sorry about that using the 18s here Don't check this again yeah 18 There's actually only four of the 18 millimeter bolts, so it should be pretty easy to find. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to compress the spring on each corner down all the way. I'm just going to make sure there's about five millimeters on each one, like five millimeters of bolt space there. And we'll actually level this later, but uh, that looks good. <clears throat> You know, probably noticed that, that the PCB heat bed is sort of bowed, and that's totally normal. Um, if it wasn't bowed, if this was actually flat, you could probably print on it, which is the reason why um, we use a piece of glass for the print surface, because the glass is flat. And so when you, when you use uh, paper clips, to secure the glass to the PCB heat bed then you'll get a nice contact between the PCB heat bed and the glass so that the glass heats up and then you'll have your nice flat surface to print on. This looks like it needs to move down a little bit. Okay. There you have it. Let me just show you the side view here so you can get a look at the side. So you can see about how far this, oops, oh, that fell out. You can see about how far the spring compresses. And like I said, we'll be leveling this later. But uh, that takes care of it. That is the PCB heat bed. Thanks for watching.